Hey, 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 welcome back, you punks. It's time for part two, the the craziest part of of the of the of the year in review. So this is this is a segment that's kind of changed a little bit over the years. But basically what it is, it's uh the good, the bad, and the WTF. So it's uh kind of the biggest cool surprise we found, and then the biggest disappointment, and then the WTF. And then we also have a, a another thing stapled onto it, which is the the biggest insult of the year, and we're also stapling a new new thing to it this year called the uh, wonky stuff that happened this year. And then at the end, we talk about like the future of the channel and stuff. So yeah, just plans for twenty twenty three in general, not just channel stuff, but stuff we mm-hmm. want to check out that we didn't get a chance to or haven't yet. I don't know. You'll figure it out. All right, so yep, we're going to kind of start out with our list of wonky events from 2022, and there were quite a few. Um, this probably... was a very off year. Like, every year I think it's going to be, all right, this year isn't going to be crazy. But this year was crazy. Yeah, for sure. It's like, I, I'm i pretty sure I like this list isn't conclusive. It was just stuff that I was <laughs> able to think of or remember when I was writing it down earlier today. But we're going to kind of start off the list with one that I kind of hinted at in the last video. And appropriately enough, I think this is the first thing that happened during the year among our list of stuff. But it was the kind of mysterious death of Bob Saget. There's really not too much I can say about it that you couldn't look up for yourself. But just the basic idea is he was found dead in his hotel room. The cut... Holy crap. Yeah, holy crap. What was that? I don't know. Whoever got Bob Saget, it's coming for us. Well, yeah, coming geez. for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so the cause of death officially has been ruled as blunt trauma to the back of the head. And we're not exactly sure how it happened, like how he took that heavy blow to the head. Because I think most, like, I think he had been, like, seen by like the hotel staff the night before he seemed okay and then you know the next morning he's dead so maybe he slipped and hit his head you know the back of his head which is kind of a weird spot to hit yourself when you fall or i don't know something maybe it was an assassin like it's just weird it's gonna be one of those unsolved mysteries i bet for a long time (laughs) another weird thing too that i looked that i like saw when i was looking at this like earlier this week is that apparently the family like, his family has been, like, kind of trying to keep hushed, like, the autopsy and whatnot. So, maybe there are actual shenanigans. I don't know. Or maybe they're just trying to keep it private. So, it's definitely mysterious. It is also very, very sad because, you know, a lot of people enjoyed his work on Full House. And I guess he was a pretty repu- reputable uh, reputable stand-up comedian. I'm not really familiar with any of his work in that front, but I don't know. Yeah. All right, I give that on the wonky rating a 10 out of 10 wonky. Okay. Now this next one, you're going to have to give a morb out of morb. Oh, (laughs) jeez. Because guess freaking what? Morbius is the best movie ever. (laughs) No. It's Morbius came back to theaters only to flop again and the reason was internet memes yeah. i mean i'm sure everybody knows about this but just holy cow just everyone was making these memes about like like the memes were making fun of how bad it was so they released the movie again and i don't in know theaters. i've yeah i've seen morbius 3 times now i only saw it once in theaters but it was also opening night and I literally went just to see how bad it was going to be. And I legitimately thought I was going to get kicked out of the theater because I was laughing so much. Like, this movie <laughs> is just, it feels like it wasn't made by a human. Like, whoever made this didn't live on Earth. Like, it's just such a weird movie. Yeah. And, like, it's one of those movies that's so bad that Jared Leto isn't the problem in it. Like, how many movies can you say that about? <laughs> Like, just hilarious. I don't know. 
It's like, I haven't seen that many movies with Jared Leto, and usually he's, well, no, that's not true. He was all right in Prefontaine, and he was also in American Psycho. I kind of forgot about that, but he gets whacked by, uh, (laughs) he gets whacked by Patrick Bateman, so I guess that's kind of cool. He's going to (laughs) ruin Tron. He's going to ruin Tron. I'm saying it now. So sad. Uh, All right. I gave that a 10 out of 10 morbs for how weird it is. Yeah, definitely for sure. I mean, I, my only reason to want to own Sony stock, and I I forget if this is a thing you you can do if you're a stockholder or not, but just to be able to like sit in on that uh, stockholder meeting, hear the exec who thought this was a good idea, explain why they thought it was a good idea. (laughs) I want to see their words. Like, is there an official statement I can see? Till then, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold back a bit. Say it's a nine morbs out of morb. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I it's... do think it's funny. I saw there was an interview with Jared Leto, and they asked if he was going to return as Morbius, and he said, "If I can return as the Joker, I can probably return as Morbius." <laughs> no boy. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here's another thing that you all have probably heard about, and that is the whole Oscars slap where, you know, Will Smith went up on stage and slapped uh, Chris Rock. And, so like, freaking weird. And that feels like it happened a thousand years ago. That's the other part. Yeah. Yeah. I don't exactly remember which month it happened in. Like, was it April? Was it March? Was it? I think it was I, February. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it happened during the Oscars, so... Yeah, well, I mean, nobody watches the Oscars, so yeah, like this well. is probably <laughs> this is probably the most viewership they've gotten in a while, and it's like post. Such yeah. a weird thing. I hope yep. Will Smith's doing okay. I don't know. He's got he's got some problems he needs to work out. He's been laying low. I don't know if he mm-hmm. was in anything in this past year or not. Yeah, I don't think he was. Yeah. I think he, no, I think he was in, I think they might have done a Fresh Prince reunion special on HBO Max. Oh, okay. But that might have been the year before. I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. But it was at least filmed before the slap incident happened. Okay. So here's a quick question I have for you regarding this, Rob. Do you think mm-hmm. it was staged? I I don't know. Like, they say everything at the Oscars <laughs> is staged, but... It doesn't feel staged, and what a lot of people have pointed out is that uh, Chris Rock drops the S word, and if you're performing for live TV, you're not allowed to do that. Like it's against the rules. Yeah, I mean Will Smith also dropped the F bomb. Oh yeah, that's right. Will Smith yells the F bomb at him. So it's like, yeah, I don't think, I don't think that was staged. And if it was staged, it was very like ballsy for them to stage that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I give that like a, you know, maybe an 8 out of 10. Nope, I'm giving it 10 out of 10. Okay. I see how it is. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a pattern happening here. Yeah. Speaking of patterns and people getting ambushed on stage, uh, well, specifically stand-up comedians, Dave Chappelle gets ambushed on stage by a... I guess he was like a homeless man armed with a gun that was actually a knife. And this was like, you know, a week or so after the whole Chris Rock thing with, uh, and uh, at the Oscars. Yeah. So yeah. Really, really weird. You think it would be, uh, the LGBT people trying to kill Dave Chappelle, but I think that's if you the go reason back the to Dave gave. Chappelle's, well, if you go back to Dave Chappelle's old stuff, he's always making fun of homeless people and crackheads. So. Yeah, yeah, but anyway, like this kind of ties back into the the whole Oscars thing because for some reason Chris Rock was there and he runs up on stage while the security are like beating the crap out of this uh this the the homeless guy after he like barely was able to knock Dave Chappelle over and like you know he just goes up and it's like hey, was that Will Smith? <laughs> I think that's what he said. Yeah, something along those lines. Yeah, I don't know. This one I'm giving a 7 out of 10, but I assume you're going to give this a 10 out of 10. Yeah, I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10. Okay, I see how it is. 
Okay, and then another one that needs no introduction, because this is like a trend that's been happening over the past like two or three years. Just the insanity surrounding Ezra Miller. This is... I, I think I even messaged you at some point over the summer, and I said we should do a, a iceberg video where we go down the Ezra Miller iceberg and we just see how far it goes. <laughs> Cause I don't th think... And that was the thing was like I sent that message then like the next week a whole bunch more like news articles came out about just how insane this dude is like it's just crazy like the dude like kidnaps people and he's got like a cult and then he's throwing chairs at people and then he's you know on the run from the feds and like no one knew where he was but he was tweeting stuff just insane like yeah and now they have this Flash movie, which they can't release, and holy cow, like, the amount of headaches that dude must have caused, not only to the people that he threw chairs at, but, like, just everything just insane. Like, there was a quote from, uh, I think his name's Ray Fisher. He's the one who yeah. plays as a Cyclops in the Justice Cyborg, League movie. Mean? Cyborg, yeah. And, uh... He said that uh, getting to work on Justice League was like being on The Boys, except it was real. <laughs> and like you can, I I can totally see where he was coming from. Now you have Joss Whedon, who is apparently a huge scumbag, and then you had Ben Affleck, who was an alcoholic at the time, and then Ezra Miller, who surprise is a psychotic cult leader, and then Henry Cavill, and I don't know. I don't know what Henry Cavill did, but I have a conspiracy theory that, like, Henry Cavill is, like, pushing buttons that he shouldn't because I think Hollywood hates him. They won't admit that they hate him, but, like, just the fact that he keeps getting fired from, like, everything, <laughs> it's just like, what did you do, Henry? What what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he left The Witcher because, the like, it turned out to actually be crap. I don't yeah, know. I th I think I think that's what what i've heard but it also it's one of those things where it's like who knows yeah i don't know i'm not going to speculate because i don't really care about the witcher <laughs> mm -hmm. the show or the franchise in general yeah yeah like i i just want to know what uh like dirt ezra miller has on like you know people say that he he probably has dirt on like in like a warner brothers executive i think it's probably more than one <laughs> yeah <laughs> if this is like just with like how many passes he's been given. Like my goodness. It's crazy time. So this definitely gets a ten out of ten. Yep, ten out of ten. Yep. Probably like it's like an infinity out of ten. Because you yeah. it just keeps on going. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Speaking of which Oh man. I don't know if I actually want to add this one or not, but I was going to say, I, I have on my list, uh, yay 2024. Yeah. <laughs> More or less, I would I would kind of want to highlight Kanye West's appearance on Alex Jones, uh, uh, crap, what is the show called? Infowars. Just because, for the fact that he made Alex Jones visibly uncomfortable. <laughs> that is an impressive feat. Like... Yeah. And like... I had seen clips from it, and I thought it was like kind of like edited, like he was doing this weird squeaky voice. But no, that, he was he was actually doing that in part of it. And I haven't seen the whole thing, so I'm I don't really want to comment on that. But like the whole like gimp mask thing, I don't know. It's just it's just weird. Yeah. And what's sad is think about all the people who voted for him at the <laughs> election two years ago. Yeah, I mean this isn't anything new. Like he's run for president, like twice in the past yeah but now these people like have to go to bed knowing that the one time they were trying to do a meme but actually they were like voting for like a dude who apparently is a nazi like i i don't i i'm not super up to date with it but i have no idea either it's it's weird it's just weird yeah so this gets a weird out of 10 yep weird out of 10 which in some currencies uh Translates to like about maybe I don't know seven point eight. I yeah, don't know. That, that seems that seems like a reasonable conversion. Okay, conversion. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. 
But uh, to kind of end our list, this one's kind of more of like a kind of like a sad story because it's more or less like the end of an era or I don't know. That's a weird way of putting it. But it w- it's the news surrounding Bruce Willis. Who yeah. It turns out has been suffering from aphasia. So yeah. I know a lot of people have been noticing that he's been kind of like more or less phoning in a lot of his you know, various movie roles and such over the past couple of years. He, like, sold his face to, like, some advertisement company. Like, he was deep faked onto this other guy who clearly wasn't him. And some, like, it was it like a Russian telephone commercial? Yeah, it was something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I know, I just felt bad because I remember I came over to your house and we watched some video that was, like, 30 minutes long just roasting all of these crappy Bruce Willis movies that have been coming out. And I'm like, man, Bruce Willis is so crazy. And then, like, it was, like, the next week that that news came out, and I was like, oh. Yeah. I, I that's was not just, funny anymore. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. It's like, because the thing about the earpiece, I had known that he had had hearing damage, and I think it was his right ear because of, well, if you don't know, the scene in Die Hard when he's shooting through the table, he's got, like, the gun, like, barely a foot away from his head. He's he's deaf in that ear now, <laughs> or that that caused it, or maybe it was both ears. But I don't know. Either way, like I think it really screwed up one of them. So I thought that's what it might have been. Like it was a hearing aid that they didn't really disguise too well. But it sounds like he actually had been using earpieces to be told his lines and stuff. So yeah, and there were like reports about him acting confused on like the set. Of one of the Expendables film films, I forget which one he was in, or if he was in all of them. I think he was in all of them, but oh. I think he was. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen any of them, so I don't know. So yeah, but yeah, it, it's kind of sad because I do enjoy a lot of his films. I'm just, I'm glad we got the well, maybe just the first red film when we got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's still an awesome film. The second one's all right. <laughs> I'd have to watch it again. Everybody tells me it's terrible, but I had fun when I watched it, but I was also like 17 at the time. So, you know, I I watched it again recently and it kind of reminds me of like going from Home Alone 1 to Home Alone 2. Yeah. It's too seems... self-aware and like kind of mm-hmm. it kind of like gain like it it kind of gets a bit better towards the end, but like in in the beginning, it's just like, oh, this is the first film. Remember what you liked about the first film? We're gonna pretend like we're just gonna lean really, really hard into it. Oh yeah, Marvin, he's crazy. Remember that, or whatnot. But yeah. So, but I'm I'm glad it sounds like uh, Bruce Willis has made enough money to kind of retire comfortably, and he just wants to spend time with his family now, which I don't know. Probably for the best, mm-hmm. but I don't know. It is still sad news either way. Yep. All right. So that was a crazy year. I don't want to rate that one out of <laughs> out of ten. I was sad out of ten. I'm sad. Mm-hmm. Kind of zero zero out of ten. Zero out of ten. Fun. Okay. Yeah. No fun. All right. So let's get into the surprises of the year or the good. Um, I'll let you start, Robbie. All right. So for me, I, I kind of have two. But uh, for me, I think the one the one I talk about the most about is uh, RRR or Triple R. And this was kind of a meme movie when it came out. But uh, I uh, finally watched it and I just kind of put it on because I'd seen the commercial and it looked funny, but I kind of just assumed it was going to be like, just a cringe foreign film. But then I watched it and I was like, actually, this is actually the best movie ever. (laughs) (laughs) Like it's, it's legitimately good and it's got really goofy over the top action sequences, but like it plays it straight, which is nice to an extent. And I knew it was a musical as well, which I wasn't too keen on seeing, but there's not a ton of music songs in it. And they all feel very appropriate. Like, uh, one of them is very deliberately supposed to be comedic. And then, uh, the ending is basically Shrek, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it's just, uh, I've, 
I've I've seen it twice now, and it's it's just a really fun movie, and it's just goofy, over the top, just the biggest rip to dudes you'll ever see, just beating up so many people, and like beyond <laughs> all of that, like it's so well shot. Like this is seriously one of the most best like shot movies I've ever seen. There's like scenes where like a wheel will fly off of a car and it'll follow the wheel as it rolls across. And in the center of the wheel, like in the whole of it, you can see one of the characters and it, you know, is focusing on him. He stays in the center of this wheel as it rolls around. Like, it's just, it's really impressive. Like I thought it was, I I literally just put it on so I could laugh at it, but I actually ended up really enjoying it. May I ask how you were able to watch it? It's on Netflix. Oh really? I did not know that. Yeah, it's so it's okay. on Netflix. They have an English dub, and there's there's quotation marks over that because it's like broken English. Oh. So if you watch it, you have to put on like if you do watch it with the English dub, you're gonna have to put subtitles on anyways. Okay, so it's just like watching the first Rocky film. I got it. Yeah, yeah, but it's okay. it is a lot of fun, and it's it's really cool. And then the other one, this one wasn't quite as much of a surprise, but I was surprised at how much I did enjoy it. And it's uh, the Weird Al Yankovic movie that came out this year. With Daniel Radcliffe? Yeah, it as, stars uh, Daniel Radcliffe as Weird, Weird Al. Al. And mm. no one is talking about this movie, which is too bad because I remember yeah. it getting a lot of traction. And I think the reason why is because you have to watch it on the Roku channel. And like, even if you own a Roku, you're not using the Roku channel. <laughs> yeah. But this the movie's is made that? by Funny or Die, which... I found very interesting because I'm like, the meme website? Okay. Really? <laughs> yeah, like this is like oh, not a Hollywood production, but it's got a lot of famous actors in it. It's got a lot of comedies. And what I love about this movie is that it has a really like unique sense of humor that I don't think most people will enjoy. But for me, it's like perfect. It's like the stupid cute humor. Like it's, uh, it's very similar to Garth Marenghi's Dark Place where it's – it's acting like it's not self-aware and it, you know, it has lines in it like, Oh, Al, I wish you would just give up on all of your dreams and be miserable for the rest of your life. Like that's what his mom tells him and stuff like that. And you know, like the whole thing is just talking about how cool weird Al is. And I don't want to spoil it because it just gets bananas towards the end, but it's just making fun of all, it's just making fun of rock stars and you know, these biopics that they're making about rock stars and, you know, like in the trailer, it shows that Weird Al goes down like a dark path where he becomes an alcoholic and stuff. And uh, when that part happens in the movie, it's like at night, and he's like, "Man, this has been the craziest six hours of my life." <laughs> 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 it's just, it's just got dumb jokes in it like that that I was in tears like the whole time. I was just laughing so hard. I was laughing harder at that than I did at Morbius. So those Dang. are the two good surprises i found this year yeah that uh i yeah i hadn't heard anything about that from anyone i'm glad you saw it because i don't know i do tend to like you know go with like the consensus online and whatnot like check out stuff Mm -hmm. but you know it really helps sometimes when it's something that i'm kind of interested in and then someone else says oh yeah this is actually not that bad yeah I think it, it was weird. Like I was surprised that there wasn't any traction around it. Like I didn't hear anything about it, so I just kind of assumed that it must have been terrible. But no, it was yeah. it was good. Yeah, it just kind of came out of nowhere, mm-hmm. <laughs> to be honest. I found out about it through um, Mondo Records, their <laughs> newsletter, because they did the soundtrack to it, apparently, or yeah. the vinyl soundtrack for it. Yeah, yeah. So those were your only two. Yeah, those those were my two for biggest surprises. Okay. I kind of got a mix of like three of them because two of them, a lot of like most people just aren't going to care about as much as I do, but I wanted to mention them anyway. But we'll start with one that people might be more familiar with, and that's that the uh, <laughs> Resident Evil Netflix series got canceled. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that wasn't so much a surprise, but I am very happy that it happened. Yeah. I mean, it's a surprise because a lot of these shows, like these really bad adaptations, they like usually make it into a second season before they finally get put out. Most, most companies will do that, not Netflix. Netflix are a bunch oh. of cheap bastards. Like, they're the <laughs> ones who canceled uh, Daredevil season four. 
despite Daredevil season three, like bringing in a ton of money and revenue and stuff like they, they, they just have the worst model ever and they're probably going to die because of it. So yet they couldn't cancel Punisher season two. Yep. <laughs> mm. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that man, I don't know how long that came after it like had been released, but it, it didn't seem like long, like maybe a month no. or two. And it felt the... like it came out right after that movie came out last year. No, that was the the series didn't come out until like maybe was it sp- spring, maybe late winter of twenty twenty two. Yeah, like it came the movie out, movie came out was like out October of twenty one, didn't it? No, no, like it oh. was still like. I think it was still in like, you know, in the press or whatever, like still making the rounds there before it finally got released. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm not remembering correctly, but either way, it's done and hopefully is not coming back. Mm -hmm. All right. Now on to the two things that other people aren't going to care as much about, but I do. And this is my video, so I'm going to talk about them anyway. The first thing is the announcement of a sequel to Garo, Mark of the Wolves, which you don't remember what that is, do you, Robbie? No, it sounds familiar, though. Yeah. So anyway, this is a fighting game by SNK. It's the, I think it's the last, like, well, Garo was the last uh, entry in the Fatal Fury series. Not okay. as yeah, not as well known as like King of Fighters or Samurai Showdown, but like I think that was the one that got the ball rolling for them. But anyway, Garo's more or less a it's kinda like a copy of Street Fighter Three, except that when S and K copied Street Fighter Three, they decided to make a game that wasn't a complete piece of shit. And you know, made make one that was actually kinda fun. <laughs> so I don't know. That's why I say to anybody who like says like, "Oh, it's just a copy," but I don't know. It's that's it's actually a good game. They must have done something wrong then. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, this kind of comes as a surprise to me, mainly because I think they were working on a sequel back in the day before SNK like went bankrupt, like in the early two thousands. It was originally going to be on the Neo Geo, like the original game was. They leaked some of the sprites for the characters and stuff, but I don't think anything else other than that had been shown. So it wasn't really far in development. But this new one, I assume, is going to be in 3D, like pretty much all of the other SNK games from the past, like, couple years. So yeah, we really don't, like, they're really... There wasn't even a trailer. There was just like a teaser image and I guess the announcement. Okay, we're finally making this. So, <laughs> I don't know. I guess I await more news for that. But it's nice to hear that that series slash, well, that series is getting revived and, you know, the best game in the series is getting made a, a sequel finally. <laughs> we'll just have to see how it is. Uh... I don't know if I want to add this other one. This one's kind of dumb. A lot of people aren't going to care about, but I don't know. Might as well just throw it in anyway. And that's the Return of the Draftsman podcast. This Mm -hmm. is a podcast centered around, you know, various topics in the realm of art. Um, Hosted by Stan Prokopenko of the Proko online art education program. And then his friend and collaborator, Marshall Vandruff. And yeah, they, in the three seasons that they had, or that they have had so far, they've talked about various different topics related to art, the business side of it, even technology and stuff. And I don't know, like, I was watching the video where they announced that, like, you know, back, this was like in 2021 or so, when they were like saying, oh, we're not going to do any more uh, Draftsman podcasts. I don't really remember the reason why. And like I, had, I was watching and li- or I was listening to the thing, and it's like I, they were making it sound like the lack of topics. But I don't know. I think COVID kind of had something to do with that too, because 
for a good part of it, they were just, you know, recording through Skype. Hmm. But anyway, like, towards the end of 2022, it was announced, hey, we're, we're bringing the podcast back. And I assume it's going to be a much more limited thing, because they haven't had too many episodes out yet. Like, I think they were doing, like, a once-a-week thing, but now it's, like, I guess maybe closer to once a month, or maybe whenever they get the time. Yeah. Fortunately, one of the episodes is kind of locked behind a paywall. Ah, oh, that's uh, too bad. Yeah, it's in a, a uh, Art Basics course on um, the Proco website, which, I mean, it's about damn time they actually made a <laughs> basics course, because most of the other stuff on that website's pretty, like, you know, advanced like they don't have anything on the basic fundamentals so i guess that's kind of cool too yeah very cool very cool not for everybody but i don't know if you're interested in art or creativity maybe check it out they still got their whole backlog on youtube so it's not like (laughs) there isn't anything to check out they got a lot (laughs) <laughs> still yeah. on there it's just that newer stuff isn't going to be as frequent i don't think but at least they're back all right so now on to the biggest disappointments the bad and mine aren't really that big of a deal because i don't know i was actually kind of straining myself to think of anything but really all i gotta say is there hasn't really been much in the way of news on the uzumaki anime or the next season of Netflix Castlevania. I mean, part of that is because I, I don't know, I haven't really been searching it out or anything. But, I don't know. Yeah. What about for you, Rob? I think I think my biggest disappointment, this is, this is kind of piggybacking off what mine was last year, but it's uh, the DC slash Marvel slate slash what are these people doing? Uh, like, so like Marvel announced like their huge, like next plan for the next two phases. And, you know, typically that should be like a really big deal that everybody gets hyped up about. But like, I don't know. These, they're not really doing anything that exciting. Like there's no Shang-Chi sequel announced. As far as I can tell, like blade is still a mess and will probably never come out. Hmm. And like, Instead of doing like a proper Avengers movie, what they're doing is a uh, it's called a Thunderbolts, and they basically took like all of the least interesting Marvel characters, and they're putting them in a team. And it's like I I don't know it's just I can't get excited over that you know like I absolutely hated Black Widow. So to, you're making another movie that's full of Black Widow's wacky friends. I I don't want to see it you know and. That's the other crazy thing is that, like, you know, this is supposed to be the end of this saga. Like, they just finished Phase 4. Phase 5 probably ends in, like, a year or something like that. Like, they're pumping out these movies too fast. And, like, there's not going to be anything cool that happens at the end of this because they're doing two Avengers movies. They're doing uh, the Kang Dynasty and then Secret Wars. And, like, you know, Secret Wars, very famous comic. It'll be... It'll be cool to see. It'll be cool to see those play out, but at the same time, it's not going to be, you know, Infinity War or Endgame levels of cool. Like, it's just such a weird thing. And then, freaking, freaking DC, man, DC just makes me sad. Like, especially right <laughs> now. Like, so they hired James Gunn to be the new DC master, and like, this is this is going to be the greatest plan we've ever had. We're hiring this this talented director to to be in charge of all of the DC stuff and to create a cinematic universe. Yeah, because it worked so well for you when you did that with Zack Snyder. Like, they're literally doing the exact same thing. Like, they're punching themselves in the face here. And, I mean, obviously the DC movies have been a mess, but I, I really don't like this new slate. And it's just weird and confusing. They're like, oh, well, we're not firing any of the old actors, but we're also going to recast them, except for Henry Cavill, because... I don't know what Henry Cavill did, but apparently he's fired. He he doesn't get to be Superman anymore. And they're planning on doing, like, this cinematic universe 
but they're also going to be doing like the Batman trilogy separately and they're still going to be making Joker movies like it's it's going to be the exact same thing like I don't look at this new slate of DC stuff and go like oh man I I can't believe DC's finally getting their shoes together cuz they're not like it's going to be the same stuff and obviously I'm very excited to see a new Superman movie that's going to be directed by James Gunn but at the same time, like, it's going to come out around the same time as uh, the new Avengers movies. So it's like, are you really betting Superman against the next Avengers movie? Okay, sure, go ahead, you know? Like, I don't know, I shouldn't be upset about by this, but I am. And it's like, the rules they're doing are weird. Like, they're going to recast Aquaman? Like, you can't recast Aquaman. Like, Jason Momoa is perfect. They're going to recast Shazam? You can't recast Shazam. <laughs> like, as big of a mess as, like, the DC movies are, they do have a few that are really good. Like, you know, that I don't think they should just scrap and throw in the waste bin. So it's just such a weird... It's just weird. and It's, like, disappointing because, I don't know, I, I'm not excited for the new DC slate. I'm not very excited for the new Marvel slate. And that's pretty disappointing, all things considered, after the movies that those two companies released this year. I mean, I am excited for uh, the next two, the Batman movies. But I can't say I'm too excited for anything else. I'm definitely not excited for that Joker sequel, which is also apparently a musical, which is just the dumbest idea ever. Yeah. And, oh, man, this, this is the other thing that bugs me. It's like, oh, James Gunn's going to take this in a new direction. He's going to do his own spin. No, he's not. He's going to try to make this a freaking sequel to Suicide Squad because he made that. Like, it's just weird. Like, I don't get it. Like, all you're going to do is confuse people. Like, oh, DC's a mess right now. I know. Let's keep having three different versions of the Joker and three different versions of Batman going on at the same time. Like, it's just weird. It's just weird. Yeah. I... Like, if you're going to do a new slate, you you just have to fully commit to it and, like, recast everyone and scrap everything else and really, like, take your time to build it up. Like, you know, do it kind of like... I mean, like, you look at the Lord of the Rings movies, and those movies had, like, three years of pre-production, you know, where they were just figuring out how to make those movies. Like, you're going to have to do that with these. Like, you can't, you can't screw this up, or else you're just going to have, like, a trilogy of failed cinematic universes. Like, it's just... Ah, they're becoming the Terminator franchise. Yeah, and like, why does it always? Ha why does it have to be a like a cinematic universe? Why can't they just do yeah, more exactly. and more like, standalone stuff? Like the stuff that DC is doing right now, I kind of like that. It's just whatever movies, and yeah, they're sort of in the same universe, but you know, they don't ever really like meet up and stuff. And obviously, team ups are really cool, but you know. As of right now, you just have to build up those characters to get people to care about them, you know, how they are. Yeah. Like, I mean, that was the one thing that I liked about Netflix Daredevil, is that it seemed... Well, it, it was technically in the MCU, but it didn't really matter that much, because he didn't really meet yeah. up with anybody from the, you know, the films, I don't think. I don't remember. No, I I agree, I agree. Like... I think I think Marvel should go back to that when it comes to all these DC shows. Like you shouldn't be trying to, you know, tie in all these, you know, characters from the movies into these TV shows and stuff like that. Just let the TV shows do their own thing and then let the TV shows, you know, intersect and stuff. But don't don't cross the TV show to movie threshold. Like I just think it's easier it's easier for that, you know. Yeah. Like I actually like, this is going to be surprising. I actually like what Star Wars is doing right now. Because Star Wars is like, okay, we're not making movies anymore. We're just going to make these TV shows, see where it goes. And then, like, if these TV shows start to die down, well, then maybe we'll release a movie. At least I assume that's what Star Wars is doing. Who knows what's really going on behind the scenes. But I don't know anymore. <laughs> yeah. And obviously, a lot of the Star Wars shows haven't been very good. But, you know... It's not a huge confusing mess like DC is, and it's not as like disappointing as Marvel is. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I got something that might 
that I'm just thinking of now that I did not have on my list that could be some approximation between a surprise and a kind of a disappointment at the same time. I don't know if that's confusing or not, but <laughs> more or less it's the announcement of the Silent Hill 2 remake. I forget when this I came out. about that. Yeah. That I, was a long time ago, I feel like. Yeah, it had to have been in October, I think. Yeah. So yeah, it was a while ago. So more or less, Konami kind of like dropped like three big Silent Hill announcements at one time. I think one of them was they're making another movie. <laughs> Which, that will be bad. Yeah. I haven't seen any of them, so I cannot... I've heard the first one's okay, but I don't know. Aren't they all Yui Bowl films? No, they're not Yui Bowl. They're um, Christopher oh. Gons, I think is his name. Okay. Yeah. I heard the first one might be okay. The second one I've definitely heard is a giant turd. But, yeah, I haven't <laughs> seen either of them, so I can't comment. Um, the other announcement was for a completely new game called Silent Hill F, which a lot of people are just really like, oh, it's going to be awesome. But I don't see how it has any damned connection to the series because apparently it takes place in the 60s in Japan. And to those of you unaware... Like, pretty much all the Silent Hill games take place in the United States, in the state of Maine. Yeah, they take place in Silent Hill. Yeah, Silent Hill. Which the... is a real place in Pennsylvania. Oh, really? <laughs> it's not called Silent Hill, but it's very much inspired off of... I mean, obviously, it's not a real place, because there's no, like, magic stuff there, but... Yeah. There was, there was like, a town in Pennsylvania where, like, a... It's the uh, one where the coal mine caught fire, right? Yeah, the coal mine caught yeah. fire. Or maybe... I kind of want to go. Maybe they just have very, very bad graphical limitations in Pennsylvania. Yeah, the, that could the, be, that the, could be the too. Matrix kind of glitches there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but anyway, so like I don't know. I'm not as excited for it. Apparently, the writer that they have slated for it might be pretty good, and I don't know. Maybe it'll involve the cult in some way. They're like trying to, they like have a mission out in Japan for who knows what. So I don't know. It just kind of seems like they're cashing in on the brand for a game that is completely unrelated to the series yeah and then finally the silent hill 2 remake and apparently like people had known this was coming for a long time i did not be i didn't because i pretty much live under a rock but it's made by it's going well it's being made by the same team that made the medium which we have talked about before bloober team now, the reason why this is kind of a disappointment to me um, is mainly because I I honestly think they should have remade the first Silent Hill game before they made two, because that's the one out of, like, I don't know, all of them that kind of would deserve it a bit more, because it came out on the original PlayStation. It's not that easy to play anymore for most people, unless you have a physical copy or you emu emulate it. And, like, it looks kind of, well, it looks kind of dated. Um, it didn't run too well on the original PlayStation. Kind of gives it the game a bit of character, but I know a lot of people are turned off by crappy graphics or, you know, quote-unquote, and poor performance. So I think they should have gone with that. And, yeah, because Silent Hill 2, that's, like, the one that, like, everybody, like, that's the most beloved in the series. So it kind of seems like a really bad idea for them to start out with that. Especially since yeah. it seems like the, I don't know, like it's just more or less like a shot-for-shot shot remake, it sounds like. I don't know if they're going to do anything different with the combat, which might be something to, I don't know. Yeah, because I feel like you'd have to like update like the combat and stuff just because, I don't know. Yeah, it did sort PlayStation of. PlayStation 1 era games don't really translate well into modern games. Yeah, I mean... Except for Tony Hawk. <laughs> the sequel came out on PS2. Oh, but, did it? Well, I yeah. thought it was on both, actually. No. It came out okay. on PS... It'll, yeah, it, it was PS2 era. I think it came out on Xbox and PC as well. But it... Well, no, I know it did come out on those, but... So <laughs> it... More or less uses some sort of mix between, like, a dynamic camera and, like, you know, the tank controls that Resident Evil has, so it's a, it's a bit clunky, but it's not anything you can't learn how to do. 
But I could see them doing something similar to what they did for the Resident Evil 2 remake where they just make it over the shoulder. Yeah. For the combat. So I don't know. And Bloober Team, as far as I know, hasn't made any games that have combat in them. So I think the first game would have worked a bit better as a proof of concept before they moved on to the, you know, before they decided to attempt the more beloved one. They could have worked out all the kinks and made it much more, well, much better. I don't know. It's sort of a wait and see type thing. Because <laughs> I don't think there's, it's coming out like in the next month or so. And I don't think there's been any like gameplay trailers or anything to my knowledge. No. Which is really, Maybe really Japan weird. Japan there has, but not here. Yep, I'll have to take a look. Because I haven't heard any news. More, most, more people are focused on the Resident Evil 4 remake. Mm-hmm. And anything and that's had gameplay revealed, but surprising this surprise this hasn't. All right, so you want to move on to the what the f? Yeah. All right. So I know earlier I praised Star Wars for keeping their eggs in one basket, but last year, well, like. Two years ago, really, there was a leaked image of a Lucasfilm gift box, and it had the logo of Tales of the Jedi on it. And for those of you who don't know, which is most of you, Tales of the Jedi was like a comic book series in the 90s that was like very, it wasn't the earliest Star Wars legend story, but it was very early, like thousands, thousands of years before KOTOR. This is like the very like first age of the Jedi Order and stuff. So it was very weird, very experimental, and it was very different. So when I saw that they were doing that, I got excited. I was like, whoa, Disney is actually doing something, like, really unique and different, like, going back and, you know, adapting this really old, obscure comic book series. And the logo is literally the exact same as it is on the comic books from those ages. Like, they just took it and copied and pasted it, basically. But, no, instead what this is, is it's like, Six Clone Wars episodes with the name Tales of the Jedi slapped on. Like, why did you do that? Like, because you just erased the entire possibility of going back and doing those crazy weird stories, you know? Like, I don't know. I think we can all agree that we want Star Wars to do new, unique things at this point, you know? Like, especially after the sequel trilogy, which definitely did not try to do anything too unique. So, like, to go back and, you know, make more Clone Wars episodes, because we already have seven seasons of those, and then to call it Tales of the Jedi, dude, that's just, what the F, man? What the F? Like, no one said you can't make more Clone Wars episodes. Like, No, no it's no, illegal. I'm saying yeah, it's illegal. <laughs> no. No. <Yeah. laughs> don't, like, I don't know. A lot of people probably don't get this, but this would be like if they came out with, like, a new Marvel movie called, like, Ghost Rider, and it was just about Spider-Man. Like, it's just stupid. Like, don't do that. <laughs> no, man. Yeah, like, big, big WTF right there. Yeah. Yeah. I guess the Silent Hill thing's a bit of a WTF for me. Maybe that, I should have put it under that. <laughs> But I don't know. It got the. It was a bit of a head scratcher for me personally. Maybe not as much for other people. I don't know. Eh. Really, the only w- other WTF I have on like my list is uh. Well, I finally checked out um Guilty Gear Strive. I played it for like literally five minutes, and that's nothing. That's not really saying anything against Strive. That's kind of been the case with me and fighting games over the past year. Just decided to kind of tinker around with um, training mode for a bit. So I guess I should have had that under new games I tried out. But yeah, that's it was it was literally like ten minutes I played of it. But I don't know the what the 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 what the f for me is a uh, I don't know. There's a new DLC character for like that introduced the second season of DLC. It's Bridget, returning character from, uh, oh, it's like the X series. 
of games. Well, X sub series. Like, oh man, Guilty Gear is just horrible when it <laughs> comes to like naming and stuff. They're worse than it's, it's, it's a franchise that's just as insane as their characters. Yeah, it's worse than Street Fighter. Like, I'll I'll admit that. Like the naming and all of that. Like it, it's horrendous. But anyway, so Bridget is back, and apparently Bridget is now a girl. I'll leave you with that. And it's probably going to be a very confusing for a lot of people. <laughs> Just don't look too hard into her backstory too much. <laughs> yeah. That is all. All right. So. Let's move on to the biggest insult. Oh, yeah. I haven't even told you mine, so. But I think I kind of half remember yours. So we'll yeah, have you start. So. I want to go back to last year. Last year, I almost gave uh, Halloween Kills the biggest insult, but I decided to go with Mountain Dew because it was funnier. (laughs) But what I didn't expect was that Halloween Kills was going to look amazing compared to Halloween Ends. (laughs) Uh, No way. Like, wow. Like, People say that, like, Rise of Skywalker is a terrible, like, way to end a trilogy because it just kind of throws away everything that was set up before. No. Halloween ends is how you do that. So, for a quick refresher, Halloween Kills was really stupid, but it had a really cool ending. Uh, The cool thing about Michael Myers, I think, is that you never know how powerful or, like, what he even really is. And Halloween Kills ends with a mob beating him up and shooting him up. And then he just stands back up and kills, like, 20 people. Like, it's cool. You're like, oh, shoot. It, that's how the movie ends. It ends on this big revelation that, oh, shoot, Michael Myers is literally unstoppable. Like, he's just this insane, <laughs> unknown killing force. So, Halloween ends, the next movie. Michael Myers is living in the sewers. He hasn't killed anyone in years. And he gets beat up by, like, a freaking, like, 19-year-old kid. And then the 19-year-old kid steals his mask, and then he becomes the killer for the movie. So Michael Myers doesn't even, like... Michael Myers is apparently super weak now. And then he shows up at the very end of the movie, and he breaks into Laurie's house so he can get his mask back. So then Laurie kills him. <laughs> it's just... It's, it's just... Everything about it is just so stupid. And, like, the last one was dumb, but... A lot of people are saying this is the worst Halloween movie, and I probably believe them. And Halloween isn't exactly a franchise that's known for having a lot of good movies. So the fact that they were able to take Halloween 2018, which is a really good Halloween movie, and they just completely just destroy it, just make the worst trilogy possible. Just It's just mind-boggling. Like It's just strange that somebody looked at the piece of paper and said, oh, yeah. This is the direction to go. Like, goodness. Yeah, that's... <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, I think Cinemassacre had a video on it, and, like, I don't remember the thumbnail, but it's just, like, more or less, uh, what's his name, James... Uh, James, uh, you know, the a- AVGN, pretty much. It's, like, him and the yeah. thumbnail. It's, like, he looks confused, I think. <laughs> that about yeah, he... sounds right. <laughs> he did not like that movie like most people yeah i i hadn't heard anything about it until now maybe like yeah. hearsay like people are like oh it's not that good like oh okay it's not not that good it is straight up an insult <laughs> and that's why i give it the biggest insult of the year <laughs> okay so for mine mine involves something that i did not watch because i have taste <laughs> and I'm not a pre-post metal puzzle woman in her 30s, and that is uh, Daredevil's appearance in uh, She-Hulk. Just sad. Yeah, like it's. It, you it's, think that would be cool because they're both lawyers, but like, no, She-Hulk yeah. is bad. Yeah, and it's not like the yellow suit or anything. I know a lot of people are saying it looks kind of crappy. I I didn't. I get think a good I look think it, it looks good. I think that's as good as you can make the yellow suit yeah. look. Yeah, and it's 
not the fact that, I don't know, I guess they banged or whatever, because apparently, you know, in the comics, Matthew Murdock, from what I understand, is a bit of a ladies' man, to put it lightly. But it's the fact that they walked of shame. They, they, they made him do the walk of shame. Yeah. Like, what the hell like, is that? The Daredevil is so freaking good. The show is, is so good. And this is how he returns. Like, I know he technically returned in Spider-Man, but that was just like a cameo. Like... Uh, it's just, it's sad, and it makes me scared for the uh, Daredevil series that they announced. That's that's yeah, that's not looking I good. I would want, yeah, I would want nothing more than to see a true season four of Daredevil. But you know, if they're just gonna make it like goofy and you know super G rated, and he's gonna be like teaming up with different goofballs like i i don't want to see that just make it cool and dark and gritty like yeah the the born again story arc of daredevil is pretty freaking good but they kind of already did a lot of it in season three so when i announced that it was gonna be called daredevil born again i was like god i mean i guess i guess well i don't even think that uh what's her name deborah ann wall is coming back who plays as a karen and, like, normally I'd be like, okay, cool. Karen was kind of annoying sometimes. But she's she's a pretty important part in the Born Against like, yeah. story arc. So it's like, what are, you, what are you doing, you know? Yeah. I mean, they're probably just doing their own thing, and they just called it Born Again because it's a famous comic and it's a reboot of the show. But I don't know. I just – I don't want to see Daredevil handed poorly, you know? Mm. I can't do it. Yeah, I, I'm not feeling confident about, and I've probably said this before a bazillion times, I'm not confident about the Punisher returning either. I because... think, yeah, I don't know. I would love to see the Punisher come back, but again, only if they do a good job with him. Yeah, I could see them trying to do whatever, like that weird change that they did for him in the comics where they like took away his guns. I don't know. I heard that... <laughs> I heard that comic run actually turned out all right in the end, but it still had a lot of dumb stuff as part of it. Like, you know, the big thing, changing the symbol. Like, that mm-hmm. was stupid. Like, that's one of the most iconic, like, superhero, quote-unquote, symbols there is. Punisher yeah. Skull. It made it look like a weird demon head. Eh, I don't know. So, I yeah. just want to see Punisher with a minigun just shooting people. Yeah. Like... <laughs> Yeah, just some street level stuff. Is that too much to ask? Mm-hmm. I mean, that was one of the big problems with the Netflix series. Is it was more of the government conspiracy, like Punisher Max type stuff. But no, no, just to go after like you know, just have Punisher jump monsters. on top of a bus and start mowing people down in the bus because he hates them, and then have Daredevil jump on top of the bus and they fight. You know? Yeah. Like, I'd watch that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this stuff should be so simple. It's just it's just crazy how insane everything's getting. Yeah. All right, so let's kind of not end on like a negative note. Let's talk about our mm-hmm. plans for 2023, which are very bright, very shiny, very optimistic. There's some good stuff on the horizon. I don't know. You start. Okay. So, I don't know. This is, this is going to be a big year for me because I'm going to graduate college this year, which means I have an adult job, and I have like... I don't know. This is this is going to be a very exciting year for me, so I'm, I'm going to try to do my best. It's a trap. <laughs> yes, it is a trap. You yeah, but the college is a trap too. So <laughs> oh, it's yeah. just like which which trap? I'd rather be in a trap that pays me money versus the trap that takes away my money. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, uh, but I don't know. I'm I'm excited for a lot of things. I don't want to get too in depth because this isn't the podcast about my life, but. Uh, I finally started making a video, which I will not name what it is because I want it to be a surprise. It's going it to make will a come lot. Out. <laughs> yeah, it's going to make a lot of people mad. Uh, I've been talking about <laughs> making this video for years. And this isn't just like, yeah, I think I'm going to make it. This is like I've already recorded it. I'm five minutes into it, like editing the video. Uh, it should come out before March 1st or on March 1st. So... If you're in touch with pop culture or if you know me, you probably know what the video is. But I'm a 
pretty happy for how it's turned out. I'm excited. I'm excited for that. So I will at least release one real video this year because last year we didn't really get too many real, real videos. We had Quake Miss. Yeah. But most of it, we, we didn't do too much last year, and I'm hoping this year I can do more. Yeah, definitely. I'm kind of echoing that. There's a series of videos that I've kind of been wanting to do, like start up in the past year that I just haven't gotten around to, mainly because I'm not sure like on the format I want to do. Maybe I'll have to talk with you about that, see what you would think would be best, but that is definitely on the horizon for me. Maybe some other random stuff. I would like to do more like just random topic stuff like we used to do in the past. I know it's kind of hard with... I know I kind of talked about it, but I would love to do a full video talking about why I hate the new DC slate. Like, I think that would be fun. But that's for a different time. Okay. What about, like, like any new media coming out? Okay, so here's here's my biggest nerd anticipation stuff that's coming out this year. Uh, So number one, uh, Star Wars... New Republic, Omnibus Legends, Volume 2. Yes, that is a mouthful, but for like, I think the third, maybe the fourth time in history, they're going to reprint the graphic novel of the Thrawn trilogy. But it's not only just that. It So it's a huge Omnibus collection, and it comes with the entire graphic novel of the Thrawn trilogy, which is very rare and highly sought after for Star Wars fans. But it also comes connected to the Dark Empire trilogy, which is also very highly. So this book is going to be like the holy grail for like Star Wars comic collectors, which I guess I accidentally became a few years ago. Uh, <laughs> When's that dropping? I might get in. It on drops that too. in July. It's it's only going to be seventy bucks just to get like only going to be seventy bucks. Yeah, holy only crap. seventy. Well, that sounds <laughs> that sounds stupid, but oh, I know. Uh, like these comics go for so much. Like these are like. Two hundred dollar comics, and it's so, like it's it's in color too. I assume it's several hundred yeah, pages. Yeah, color, hardcover, yeah. like yeah. you know, these are the comics that the Mandalorian is probably going to be based off of. I think that's what they're setting up is the Thrawn trilogy, and then the Dark Empire trilogy is what uh, uh, Rise of Skywalker is based off of. That's like the Emperor clones and stuff. So it's very famous legend stories. So I'm definitely going to get my hands on that. Yeah. But also, after 900,000 years, Invincible Season 2 is officially coming out this year. <laughs> There's no official release date besides uh, probably late 2023, but hey, I'll take that. Uh, the trailer they released is very funny. Oh. But uh, yeah, I loved Season 1 of Invincible. I'm very excited to see where it goes. All right. And then a uh, couple games that are coming out that I'm a little excited for. Uh, there's a System Shock remake that should be coming out in a couple weeks, I believe. And then uh, Bolt Gun, which is uh, for ha- Warhammer 40K's take on the new boomer shooter craze. So I'm ex- I'm excited for that too. So those are those are my biggest anticipations. Okay. I got a couple of them. I mean, I already mentioned it earlier, but I await any news of Uzumaki or the next season of Castlevania. Yeah. Um, Hopefully th- this October, this will be the one that Uzumaki comes out. It has to. Like, it has to. It's been so long. <laughs> Please. Like, it more or less, like, was a big, like, you know, talking about that was like a big, like, switch for our channel. Talking about more random stuff. Yeah. But, you know, manga kind of brought in that into the fray, even though we don't really cover that much. Um, mm-hmm. Other than that, uh, oh, Two board games that are coming out, or rather are being fulfilled from a, like, you know, crowdfunding campaigns that I'm looking forward to. Obviously, the remake board game that's coming, I think, in July. It was supposed to come in March, but I think, well, they had some manufacturing problems, like molding problems with the miniatures. Uh, so that delayed it quite a bit. And I think Chinese New Year actually also factored into the, the <laughs> delay because they, like, shut down manufacturing for like a full month like that's crazy (laughs) but anyway another game that i'm looking forward to that i have not talked about at all is a total war rome Hmm. got a board game huh yep 
It, That's crazy. Yeah, the, the kind of the unique thing about this is that it was a a game found campaign, and normally game founds only used for like the pledge manager after like a kickstart Kickstarter, but this one was mm-hmm. just straight up run on game found, so it also was used as the pledge manager, quote unquote, and. It kind of looks almost like an ancient world Axis and Allies. But, of course, you know, it brings in some stuff from the video game, I think. Yeah. Like, it has all, like, pretty much all the factions, if you got, like, the like the expansions. I, I think some of them are, you know, the campaign exclusive, but I don't know. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. They say it's going to come out, like, end of, you know, Q2 this year. I think that's a little overly optimistic because they haven't really been doing any manufacturing updates, but they have really been like turning out like, I don't know, the demo videos and like, you know, updates on GameFound every now and then. So I, I look forward to it a lot. It'll be fun to play. Yep. That sounds cool. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then, um, also, I look forward to, you know, the updates for the game Isonzo, which I mentioned. They already have their development plan laid out. I looked at it on Steam. It's going to be pretty cool. I hope they I hope they add another, like, allied faction in, because, I don't know, playing as Italy is cool, but it would be neat to play as someone else. I think, like, I don't think there are really that many other options, because <laughs> it is the Italian, based on the Italian campaign. So there really weren't any other allied forces or as much on that part of the in that part of Europe during the war as it were, you know, like on the Eastern Front or the Western Front. But yeah, that'll be cool to see. And what about uh was there anything that you else that like new to you that you plan on checking out this year? Uh Nothing that comes to mind right now. Uh, there probably will be, but nothing, nothing super, super big. Okay. I'll just go down my list real quick. Kind of want to do a deep dive into westerns and war films. Kind of started on the lat- or the former this past year. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, want to check out a lot of like you know the spaghetti westerns. The Wild Bunch, that one's top of my list. <laughs> it's like, imagine like Red Dead Redemption if it were a movie. That's pretty much Dang. what that is. It's like set in like the early 1900s, 1910s. So it's like a dying West. Mm-hmm. Just kind of neat. Um, then another like thing I got kind of a start on, deep dives in the filmographies of Vincent Price, Charles Bronson, Peter Cushing. As you know, like I've. Vincent Price and Peter Cushing were pretty easy because, you know, they were in House of the Long Shadows. And oddly enough, um, yeah. Charles Bronson was actually in House of Wax. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't credited as that. He, like, went into uh, Bushinsky, I think, is his uh, birth name. And that's what he was credited as. But. I don't know the the poster that you used in the Halloween video. I think had Charles Bronson instead of that. It's like, oh, he hmm. was in that movie. Where? It's like, <laughs> oh, he was the he was the mute helper guy. Okay. <laughs> um, and then I don't know. Want to finish playing Dark Souls and maybe try to get through the rest of that series. Play some more Castlevania. Finally, play and beat Red Dead Redemption. A lot of. A lot of stuff on my plate, and you know, of course, check out a lot of the war, uh, board games and war games that I picked up. So yeah, I got a, I got quite a bit to do. Yeah, you got a heavy plate. Yeah, I do too. It's called my whole Steam library, but I just, I just accept that I'm probably not going to beat most of those games. Robbie, there's a difference between having a heavy plate and then a series of Herculean tasks. <laughs> and that is what going through your Steam library is. Let alone beating it's like I have, I have a full in. warehouse. <laughs> yeah. My goodness. Like, I, I, 
One of, one of my main motivations to have kids is so they can beat the games that I didn't have enough time to play. <laughs> my goodness, yeah. <laughs> uh. All right. Uh, I see you finally beat the Castlevania Advance Collection. So tell me, son, how was it? This game sucks. I want to play Fortnite. Smack! Go to your room! <laughs> oh, yeah. In the future, every game is going to be Fortnite. <laughs> Only because Fortnite's going to have that many crossovers. Yeah. They haven't absorbed Castlevania yet, as far as I know. Or Red no, Dead, I, right? think, <laughs> I think the Nintendo family is untouched. So, Well, that's technically Konami. I don't think yeah, anything else Konami. Konami's been thrown in there, but I could see them doing it. It'd just be so weird seeing, like, Alucard or Simon Belmont or, I don't know, Dracula with, like, a AR... <laughs> like a yeah. M4 or whatever type guns he's using. so weird. Yeah. It's like weird enough seeing Goku with one. Like a gun yeah. in general. <laughs> uh, yeah. I really want to beat Black Mesa this year. For some reason, like, I just keep waking up and going, I gotta beat that game. And it's a game I've played from start to surface tension twice in my life. And surface tw- tension is like the fourth to last level. So it's just like... <laughs> It's that yeah. freaking stupid tram at the beginning. The first level, the first couple levels are such a drag. That that's what's stopping me from going back and playing over again. Because my save always gets corrupted. It's just, but I I want to beat it because I love Half Life. Yeah. So maybe I'll do that. Yeah. Maybe it, maybe I'll check out Half Life as well. But one thing. Oh, I do kind of want to throw an announcement in here that I almost forgot about. Speaking of FPSs, so I haven't checked out Plut- the Plutonia experiment yet. Part of the reason why is because I want to do a. I want to do a blind run of it, you know, pistol start, mm-hmm. on UV, but I don't want to quite do it just yet. So I notice we that's like a noticeable. I'm not noticeable. It's a reasonable decision. <laughs> yeah, but I think the reason why is because I kind of want to set a goal. Before I do that, I think I want mm. us to try to you know finally break. Or hit the 400 subscriber mark. Yes, we do need to do that. Yep. And that'll, you know... Also, I think there's some other wad that we were supposed to play, but I don't remember what it was. You might have to ask Greg. Greg, yeah, put, it, have to ask put Greg. it in the comments. Greg probably remembers. There was probably some really obscure wad that he really wanted us to play that he yeah. always complained that we didn't. Yeah. But I can't remember what it was, so... Yeah. Hope it wasn't... Well, we already played part of Doom the way it did. Mm-hmm. Or at least I played one map of it, and I have a recording of it that Rob hasn't uploaded because apparently I sent him the wrong video file. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's messed up. I'll get up. it figured out. I wish you would have told me that sooner because, dang, that is a bummer. It was it was a very busy time in my life. Okay. Yeah. So, yep. Once we hit 400 subscribers, I'm going to torture myself, and it'll be fun. It'll be unedited for the most part. Mm-hmm. And... I don't know. Maybe if you're around, <laughs> maybe I'll wait till you're around. You can kind of add some commentary yeah. to that too. It might just be boring just watching having me swear at, you know, Doom. Well, we could for do like three uh, we could do freaking live streams. We could you could live stream it. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. I've never. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, that wouldn't be bad either. I don't know. We'll we'll have to think about it. And at the very least, want to do it. Mm-hmm. Just have to. You know, put some effort in, you know, post some videos, be a little bit more frequent about it. Maybe. Because we're at like 377 now. Yeah. Which is neat. It's, it, it's still growing, so. Yep. So, yeah. Yep, I definitely look forward to 2023, even though, you know, we're already a month into it. Um, mm-hmm. There are definitely nice things on the horizon, even though there's a lot of crazy and dumb and weird shit happening in the world. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the important thing is to look past the weird stuff and find the good stuff. Mm-hmm. All righty. That was a really uh, wholesome way to end this video. All right. So let's not screw it up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. This is me. Right. I'm a, Robbie. Yeah, this that's, is that's him. The yeah. guy. A man. Yep. And we're on the internet, but we're also in our... Well, he, he's at his house, but I'm I'm on a chair. I'm on a chair too. Oh, I, I couldn't. In a house. Sorry. 
All right. That's it. Bye. Bye.